Hello and welcome to this video about the CCTL2X transport. Um, I'll play a quickly couple of tones because the, the, the thing was, and you can see oh, you have to press play to actually for something to happen. This is a belt driven transport so as you see it takes some time for it to gather pace. And the complaint was that it was uh, temperamental in um, in choosing which CDs to uh, have to play play again. So it takes some time, but you see, it plays my tracks um, eight and fifteen, which means that it's quite good. Basically, it meets the standard. And as you see, this is the biggest pack ever. It's not that heavy. But but certainly covers the the whole CD and this is my test disc. So and to, it plays every CD I throw at it. And now we have a CDR. Um, now this things are not supposed to play CDR. And I had the um, TL5100 before, and I got a diagram even from the late Ken Ishiwata himself. He told me that I won't be able to get TL5100 to play CDRs, and I didn't. Well, this has the same <laughs> servo board, but as you see, CDR is playing. Uh, this uh, transport comes from another workshop uh, which replaced laser, but you couldn't get it to play CDs reliably. Well, I play CDs reliably now, and um, and even behaves reasonably good for a belt drive. Um, if we go fast wind, you know, belt drives are not renowned for doing that. Even goes backwards, but it's not as good as um, the 51XR. 51XR is the best one I've ever seen, but it's much better than TL5100. As far as um, build quality, it is excellent. You can see it's beautiful champagne finish, and it's the first one that I see with insides nicely with I think it's a brushed aluminium and the, so it's pack. The only thing that they didn't quite quite get right was that uh, cover for the laser. The um, the top cover is also very very nice and you can see it there, you know, but you know, had I put it on you wouldn't know what's inside. And what is inside is, uh, this is the servo board that is exactly the same as uh, TL5100. And that is the output board that is exactly the same as uh, 51XR. So it's a sort of a mix of different players. I have no idea where the power board comes from. Uh, it is very good. The uh, sealed transformer, uh, you can select the voltages just by replacing a link, and the fuses there. Uh, there is, I think, five regulators, two there, one there, and two over here. So it's all together five. And that's just a transport, so it's not a CD player, so that's a reasonable um, amount. Well, it has its own, you know, belt drive thing, you know. It's not going to work just as well as your proper um, CD player. Um, what, uh, what went wrong with it? The main thing was that... Um, the rails on which they had travels were pretty worn out and had nicks on it, so I sort of turned them 180 degrees, so now it had travels on the virgin surface. Slightly up, maybe like um, 0.2 of a microvolt, um, uh, the um, laser power. But this is to play CDRs. Um, and be more reliable on CD, so now it plays absolutely any CD. Um, then, uh, what else did I do? I cleaned the pulleys and uh, cleaned the belt. The belt is in good condition. So, um, that's about it. Um, 
the previous guy replaced some capacitors, mainly capacitors here are Nihikon and Nippon Chemcon, although some of them have Jamicon written on them, but they're still made by, um, by Nippon Chemcon. Um, what have we got? What else? Um, I'm not quite happy about that board, that output board. It is a low output, and I think ASDB will stop working. Tossing works fine, but uh, SPD f is finicky. It doesn't start straight away. It's very strange because if you look, uh, I don't know if you can see my mouse, probably not. Um, the data comes to SPD, goes through the uh, flip flop and goes out and the same thing goes for ASEBU but there is a strange thing that it all comes out of the laser signal so it would appear that unless it gets a feedback from the server board that it reads the CD it's going to disable output I don't know why they do that so sometimes it takes a bit for it to kick in and, uh, and possibly it's a bit lowish on the output um, so um, probably won't work with every DAC every time. Um, I myself think that um, that chip, which is 74 AS 74, needs to be replaced um, because I don't see any voltage on AS EBU anymore. So um, so and, and that probably will cure the low voltage. But I don't have. I mean, I have plenty of those but I don't have any surface mount so I'll ask the owner if he wants um, me to send it back and some of the local will replace it for him or does he want to wait so um, that's about all folks um, as far as output is concerned I have to show it to you it is actually very good and, and that, that would be interesting thing to, to show you um, let me put a, um, I think it's a white cable of the two. Uh, well, obviously not, because I cannot see anything there. Oh, I cannot see anything there because the button is not pressed. So it was a good cable, but, uh, uh, but uh, wrong button. Oh, there it is. So you say to me, hi, well, is that really a good output? Well, that isn't. But this is a J-car cable for automotive um, installation. So it's very, very well shielded. But it isn't a um, low capacity cable. Now, now I have here the one that went into the DAC. And I put it there. And we have, of course, bugger all because I have to plug it at the other end. And look at that. Perfect square. Absolutely perfect square. So it shows you that the cable matters, <laughs> at least in this instance. Um, this, uh, the signal here, as you see, is 1.8 megahertz. So, um, so high frequency, well, well above audio. And, and obviously, an audio cable for vehicle installation is no good as your digital cable. 